Not yet. Okay. It, good evening. It is December 18th, 6 o'clock, and the Dolwick Historical Preservation Commission is now in session. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have a, mo a motion to um, adopt the agenda for this evening? A motion that we adopt the agenda. Second. Any discussion? Any amendments? Anything? No? All, right. All in favor? Aye. The motion is carried. You've had a chance to read the minutes. Are there any corrections or amendments to the minutes? Motion to make a motion that we adopt, uh, accept the amendment. The moved and seconded that we adopt the Approval of the minutes from November. Aye. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Public comment. We have a group that is willing to speak or wanting to speak. Um, please state your name and give us three minutes. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak? Okay, you know, what I would like to do, though, is to welcome our two new members who are with us tonight with Alan Wright and Ken Norton. And um, look forward to them being up here with us next week, or next month. Yep. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, reports of officers, board members, or any outstanding committees. We have a report from Kim Poor, who said that when she got home from work tonight, she would be giving us um, her letter that she wrote and other information for the plaques that we still have out. Um, I think we decided on Tracy that we had five of them that have already been made, but people have not applied for those plaques that are already uh, ready for us to give them to them. Uh, her letter was fine, but we never did get it sent out. So as soon as we can get that from her, we need to work on it as soon as possible because I'm sure that we may be having others who want to have plaques made later on, but we need to get rid of those first and get them out of what we have uh, in City Hall. Mm -hmm. Are there any other reports of officers or standing committees? Okay. New business. Good evening, uh, Lenise Lyons, uh, planning and zoning spe specialist <coughs> for the city of Villarica. Um, the case you have tonight is COA-05-18 for 224 West Montgomery Street. Um, the applicant, Teresa Brown, um, for that uh, property is looking for a certificate of appropriateness for adding a sign to the facade of the building. The sign will read FANCY, that's F-A-N-C-C-I, on two two by eight weather treated plywood boards bridged together to make one four inch fiber board along the outside border color off white. Um, this is based on the description provided in the application. Um, should be renderings inside of her application. Um, and you guys know that sign's been in place for a while. This is her coming through, coming to you all to go through the process so she can also get a signed permit. She's not received a signed permit for that. Um, so uh, she's been informed and uh, she's trying to make that correct now. I do not see anyone here representing she's her. She's not here, so we'll have to table until January. And if she shows up before the meeting's over. Okay. Um, staff recommendation is approval with the conditions as, as stipulated. Um, but if you guys are voting to table, Make the motion well, here. For the moment, let's go ahead and table to the next meeting unless the applicant is to appear before us later. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Can we do that? Yes. Table it and in the. Yeah, you, okay. You can okay. Table. We have to have okay. somebody here who's. Oh, I know. I'm just asking if it, if we say we table it, <laughs> then like, it would have like, to be like tabled like, even if she shows up in yeah, 10 like minutes. That's what I was checking on. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I second that we table until okay. the next meeting. Moved and seconded that we table until next 
to our meeting in January. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Okay. Motion carried. Okay. And then next on the agenda is the Avamore Plan Development Concept Plan and the uh, applicant uh, representing um, the parties involved for that uh, concept plan is here tonight. Um, December 4th, it was, the concept plan was approved by um, the Planning and Zoning Commission and was formally approved by the City Council on December 11th. Um, and it's for their concept plan. It doesn't change the zoning at this point. Is us looking at what they're proposing and deciding whether or not it's something that we would like to see in our community. Their next step is to go out and see if that's what they can actually do in the next six months and then they'll come back um, for approval. So I think tonight he's going to discuss um, the portion that uh, staff, one of staff recommendations was to, um, for the applicant to submit nomination for the Williams Mitchell Farm and Camp Lucretia as local and state historic sites. Um, and for those local designations so they can be landmarks here in the city and um, so that uh, we can preserve them um, through bodies like yourself and through um, the, the city, city as a whole. Um, it's something that we like to see um, in perpetuity for a while. So thank um, you. Here's Mr. Davis to yeah. speak to you. For those in the audience, um, <clears throat> because as a commission, we have been discussing increasing our historical area and also making sure that we can designate some of our sites as historical sites, both locally and nationally. And so at the last city council meeting, when I heard Mr. Davis talking about the farm, I said, whoops, I didn't know that they were already on the registry. One is and one isn't, but not necessarily in that. So I have asked him to come tonight to speak basically to why they're historical areas and where they happen to be and what they're on. So thank you, Mr. Davis, for coming. Good evening, y'all. Chairman and members of the Historic Preservation Commission. <laughs> Actually, I thought we were just going to sit around and talk about this. So I guess that's what we're doing in a different way. But I'm grateful for the opportunity tonight to share with you what we have. And if there's interest in pursuing uh, local and state designations, I'd be quite happy to entertain those. Um, ultimately, what we have is uh, at 55 Goldworth Road uh, and 63 Goldworth Road, which are the addresses for the community, as that we're developing. The uh, historic farm that's on the property there is the Williams Mitchell Farm, and it has been there. I, I guess all land has been where it sits forever. But the point of this conversation, the actual farm itself as a working um, entity has been in sight since the end of the Civil War. And prior to that, the family was related to it, but it wasn't in their possession until after the War of Northern Aggression was uh, ended. <laughs> and uh, at that time, then the Williams family took over, and on the house that was built some in 18, I think, 66, and then on into the 1880s for the main house, and then later, about another 40 years in the 20s to finish it out, the main house has been there since that time. And it had with it um, the most progressive agricultural um, system still uh, outstanding in the state of Georgia. So I'm not sure I'm using the right words there, but ultimately what happened is they built a farm. They had everything from cotton to rice to indigo to pork to beef to um, goats and sheep and everything in between. In fact, they have the most historic honey locust tree in the United States. It is the most prolific with the highest sugar content of any honey locust tree in the country at its time. And there's reports. I had a visit from uh, state agriculture headhunter this year for our honey locust tree and he came out there and took pictures of it and took samples of the beans and evidently having a honey locust tree source of sugar for your animals back then was kind of a big deal so that tree still is in it's still on the property still alive still producing so that's one aspect of it um, there's a main house there's a horse barn there's a livery stable there's a cattle barn there's a feed silo all as a piece of the historic farm that has been set aside by the family, the Williams Mitchell family, as the Goldworth Farm Park. And they have the main house registered, as, a, as far as I can tell, in the National Historic Registry. Um, 
I don't know exactly what all that confers upon me as a duty in relation to the property, but maybe over the course of the next few months we can figure that out together. It is part of our proposal that in the longer term we dedicate the farm park at either a local or a state level uh, in such a way in perpetuity that it's um, managed on some level by the um, nonprofit that's been set up to care for it and to pay all the bills and so forth, but also to have the um, Historic Preservation Commission to be involved to the extent the city has an interest in pushing that. In addition to that site, um, we have uh, what's known as Camp Lucretia, which is the first CCC camp or Civilian Conservation Corps camp in the state of Georgia. And in fact, most of the Southeast well, it was done in, I think, the late 1920s upon a petition of uh, Mr. Williams, got on the train, went up to Washington, said that we were in need of road expansion out here, and that between the progressive farming techniques he used by having the first electricity here in West Georgia for the purpose of milking his cows, whose milk went to Grady in Atlanta and into Carrollton every day on the train, into Atlanta on the train here on carriage roads. Um, road improvements, farm improvements, and exposing the young men to whatever it is young men did back then in a camp. Um, and that was uh, Camp Lucretia, and it had, I think, 10 to 20 resident cabins. I think there was upwards of uh, 200 men initially, and then it grew and shrunk and grew and shrunk until all the chores got done. But I think a good bit of the road going into Carrollton, the road improvements there, and a good bit of the farm improvements here uh, were done by those men at Camp Lucretia. And to the extent that we can recreate what is completely gone there. Um, we intend to work with the University of West Georgia who's done an extensive amount of research on not only the Williams farm, but also on the CCC camp site. And to the extent that we can recreate at least the main building where they had uh, um, their, where they ate and I, I don't know if you've ever been to camp, but can you, if you can imagine sitting around a fireplace and eating and singing and doing and whatever guys did in a camp back then, that's where they did it. I think that the foundation walls of that and the main fireplace are still standing. And between that and some other physical type designations like the swimming pool that was built back then and some other things, we can probably recreate enough of Camp Lucretia that we could also um, dedicate that to some extent. And, Part of the trail system that we've designed within the Avamore community will have um, the historic plaques related to what went on here, why it happened, when it happened, and so forth. Um, and we hope to do that for Camp Lucretia and for the main farm, including the dairy barn, which I'll have to rebuild, and a couple other features, um, including the formal gardens, which may, I may have to talk to some garden club about. But When you're talking about the historical plaques, you're talking about the ones that actually have more to say not just that it's a historic area. That's right. Coming not just from here, but from the National Registry, to the, if I, possible. I, I know zero about all this. I'll have to follow your guidance and have y'all help, help me set up what works best for the city. And, you know, frankly, I talked to the city early on, or at least uh, about three years ago when I started this, talked to the mayor about, am I done? No. no. All right. Um, I, I talked to the mayor about, uh, putting a city park there and calling it the Goldworth Farm Park and, and dedicating it to the city. He said, well, that comes with a financial burden and we don't want to accept it unless you also bring money with it. So I, with that in mind, I kind of figured out how to do that. I'll turn some event center stuff there and make it available to the community at large, um, set up a 501c3 to handle that. So I think we have a way to help fund the purpose of the park and maintain it, maintain the buildings. Um, as far as actually refurbishing in them and rebuilding them, what I'd prefer is that we just don't get in my way and I'll spend all the money to fix it and then we'll dedicate it after the fact because that's a lot more likely to work than if I wait and petition for money through some historic preservation commission. I'm not trying to insult you, but there's probably not very much money there and as a developer, my duty is to the finished product and to the community much more so than it is the Except that we do have some procedures. Are you working with Dr. McCreary from West Georgia? Yes, Anne okay. McCreary is the, okay. the professor from West Georgia who's the historian who's got all the thesis work that's been done by all the students that have worked there for 
20 yeah. years. Yeah, I'm meeting with her tomorrow. They've, yeah. been, they've been there for a long time. And we're going to do pretty – she's already designed all the trails and all the – Right. She's already designed all that stuff. So we'll adopt as much of that as y'all say is okay and as much as she can live with. And then ultimately I'll I'll figure out a way to help make it work to where if the city wants to adopt it, we can. And if you want to ignore it, and then I'll just call it the Goldworth Farm Park anyway and post something on Google and people can stop if they want. Procedure-wise, we do have some things that need to be done. We can take Dr. McCleary's um, work and yours as well. Mm -hmm. But then we, and we can make the site separate from what we want to do to expand our historic district. They can be two separate entities. Okay. What we will be doing then is taking those sites, and we have approximately a ton of them now that can be local or national, and we're kind of looking at those and, and going through there. Then we have to apply to the state. Okay. And, and then we have to also have a public hearing. Once we do that, then we come back, um, approve it here as a commission, and then it goes to city council for adoption. So it's not something that you can do on your own because we have to do that in order to make it legal. Okay. I'm completely fine with whatever your process is. If you'll help me keep plugged into it, I'll respond. Email's Great. the best way. And to the extent that you need anything from me, try to make it after I get it designed and, and, and during the process if you need it, I'll help. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Because, I, I am excited. I yeah. always worry when government tries to help. It always sounds like I'm about to be in trouble. So, No, yeah. well, you've got two members on the board who are members of Daughters of the American Revolution. So you know. <laughs> and so we, both we're, we're very passionate about that and the area. And I live, well, a couple of us live well, in, there, in There's a good area. bit of historical reference to the Creek Indian tribe who think lived there before right. the war and so forth, too. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. It will be, yeah. more about Thank you for the work that you've done, and thank you for, for at least agreeing to come and talk to us tonight. We really appreciate well, you. your knowledge, and, and I've learned a lot, and I'm glad that I was listening to you last Tuesday night so that <laughs> all of a sudden perked up and said, ah, historical. Well, Already there. I, I respectfully ask if y'all will mind if I head out. I, I appreciate sure. the opportunity to present to you. Thank you. Are there anybody who any questions for him? No. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Davis. Yes, okay. Certified local government funds. So I've not had a chance to review all the attachments from that email I sent you all, but um, just trying to think of projects because the deadline is coming up really quickly. His project seems like one that we we is kind of project ready mm -hmm. for an application as, as a willing applicant um, that has a plan for the area um, that it, this imminent project may be coming in the next year um, it seems like maybe it's a candidate right for to, to, to do that application um, so there's the pre-development grant package and then yeah, um, so and it probably could just follow up on the work that Dr. McCleary's done, um, the CLG survey and planning grant application package. So um, maybe there's a lot of stuff in the application we already have, from the Williams Mitchell Farm we already have, from Dr. McCleary we can get, and you guys, you know, to put together an application um, for that. Um, just thinking how all that kind of came together at the same time, I think that was a prime one, um, but I'm not sure if you guys had any other ones. We had one that, that we had approximately, I think, three weeks to, to put together from the time we heard about it, and we managed yeah. to get it in. But we've got a lot of the history left from that one, yep. so that if we work with Anne together, we can probably pull it together and, and write it up and get it in okay. there. Yeah, uh, Katie sent it forward. It's right on to me as soon as she got it. So the seventh was when she got it, and I sent it on to you guys. So and I know with grants, they close they open and shut pretty quick so yes um uh, that that's uh the most i have about that um there's anything okay. well she's coming by after she has classes tomorrow night right so yeah. i'll be i'll see what she has and they can then share it with the rest of you okay. um and i can send an email to all of you that let you know how we can maybe work on it okay and then also i also sent an email out to everyone asking for other ideas too if you, knew anything so Perfect. we can you know work on that as well um, but we do need to get the historic sites out of the way as quickly as possible 
and, uh, yep. and do those as well. So that's okay. the other, if you have any more of them. Um, anything else on the grant? Yeah. Um, well, that survey was done in 08. Mm -hmm. So it may be time for an update. There's probably more sites that it. Um, yeah, they want one every 10 years, don't they? So yeah. We're, we're kind of like. Yeah. So I don't know. If that might be something also in the grant that seems like under the falls under the survey and planning situation that um, we could pursue. Um, I'm not seeing. I'm not. I got to check it out to see if there's a funding match because um, that's something that we'd have to take to council. Let me ask you the um, the uh, three rivers that we went to when we and the, the training. They did say that they would help with the survey. So if we're needing to have a survey, yep. we can ask them to do it, and it's no cost to us. Okay. Well, yeah, that's that's a good idea to get them involved too. So we might need to reach back out to Paul Jarrow and yeah. tell him this is what we're trying to do because he'd probably be interested in that project too. He did give comment during the DRI process for the Avonmore project and cited uh, preserving the farm. And that in Camp Lucretia is, you know, something that he would encourage as, as okay. much as possible. Um, unfortunately, the DRI was really just kind of recommendations that we can't really enforce. Um, and we didn't get a, a ton of comments back, but that stood out to staff as we have the Historic Preservation Commission, and it was kind of echoed by what Paul Gerald wrote. Um, so I just think there's a lot of things that might be going in favor of doing that project. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Any questions? Or anything? Yeah. While you're still there, I want to remind you that Lisa is leaving as of the 21st of this month. Yeah. And she has been a big mentor and help to us with HBC mm -hmm. with all of her knowledge. And I'm sure my running to her and asking her, what do I need to do here? What do I need to do there? She's been an absolute gem, so we're losing a gem, and we appreciate Thank you very you, Dr. much. Thank you, Dr. Mills. Um, before I go, I will send an email to all of you guys, because um, I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of uh, your commission. I learned a lot about the city, you know, just working with the boards and working with you all. Um, a lot that, you know, I'm going to carry with me forever, so um, thank you for allowing me to be a part of you all. Um, I'll leave you my email, so if you have anything in the meantime, or just wanting to talk about anything, I'm more than more than happy to, to talk and uh, help you, you know, as much as I can from back back. Uh, I'm putting your number on east. speed dial. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? I'm putting your number on speed dial. Do it. I'm happy <laughs> that, that you know. I like to stay in touch. Uh, we did some great work, and I want to I want to help you guys continue doing the work that the preservation work here that's needed. You know but we forget who we are at some point. So <laughs> but thank you all so much. Thank you. Bottom. Thanks. Thank you very much, Lenny. Thank you. Yes. Is there any other business? Just, Bobby a, Elliott. just a and note. You have a note? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, today I went, just, just a routine part of my life, I went over to a friend's and ended up with a flower shop, and we ended up carrying flowers out to the... Uh, the funeral home at Hoy Thomas, and uh, the party to whom, whom was being expected was the um, late Shirley Whitworth Garner, who was age 79 and of Villa Rica. And the reason why I bring her up in, uh, from a historical point was she is noted in her biography as being the last survivor of the uh, explosion here in downtown mm. in 1957. So she is kind of one of the passing one of the milestones. Mm. Now, a lot of people who, who are here, say, oh yeah, survived, you know, that, but we're not involved in the, in the accident. But she was involved in the accident and uh, mm -hmm. she has passed. Shirley Woodward Carter. Thank you. Welcome. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Second. We are adjourned. Thank you very much for coming.